Hello Diz viewers, it's Kaylee. And Tyler. And today we're coming at you on location at the Walt Disney Studio lot in Burbank, California. And we are here for a very special reason because today is the 65th anniversary of Peter Pan. Peter Pan is my favorite Disney classic movie and my favorite opening day attraction at Disneyland. So I had to be here. And the reason why we're able to do something special and come onto this lot, which not a lot of people get to do, is because of something called D23. And if you don't know what that is, Tyler is going to just give you a little explanation. Yeah, so the D23 is an exclusive Disney fan club. Um, for those that choose to get a membership, uh, you can have a gold status, which is basically you are allowed to um, attend these special events. There are several throughout the year. Um, screenings, we've gotten uh, into movies that come out like Coco. We went to the, the opening uh, week of that and that was completely free because we are members. Uh, every year you also get a member gift which comes with 23 different um, pieces from the archive. Um, this year is actually celebrating um, Mickey's 90th anniversary so his or his 90th birthday. So they'll have 23 special things um, pertaining to Mickey Mouse exclusively. So yeah, we're excited to, yeah. to get that. But anyways, it's an exclusive fan club. You pay, I think it's $60 a year for the gold membership. Monitor their website. They put up different screenings, different events, um, and then you basically get tickets to it. So that's how we were able to get these tickets. And it's, it's um, intimate and there's not very many people here. So it's great to kind of explore the lot and get to see one of our favorite uh, Walt Disney animation movies. Absolutely, and I also wanted to add that the D23 membership I feel is really worth it. We originally purchased it because we did our first D23 convention, which was insanity. And the gold card definitely helped out. Yeah, the D23 Expo, so that happens every two years. And if you're a member, you're allowed to get priority seating for the main panels. Definitely worth it um, in regards to that as well, especially if it's a D23 event expo year. All right, cool. So now the show is about to start. So we're going to head into the theater. It looks really cool there. We're going to be sure to drop in some footage. Seems like we're allowed to film. So I think we're gonna get a few clips without disrupting anything. But just to give you a little taste of what we're gonna have, I know that there is a presentation um, given before the film, which is so cool. Yeah. And a little Q&A session, I believe, is gonna happen. Mm -hmm. So we'll get little clips of that and uh, anything that we see that looks awesome. So let's go. Yeah, let's do it. Was used as the theme for the crocodile and was never officially sung in the film, of course. But it was recorded by Jerry Lewis. <laughs> uh, Frenchie's animation could be seen in a variety of Silly Symphony and Mickey Mouse shorts from the studio's earliest years. And he animated on some of the most notable titles, such as the 1931 version of The Ugly Duckling, Flowers and Trees, Building a Building, The Wise Little Hen, Donald Duck's debut, Flowers and Trees, oh, I said that, <laughs> Elephant, <laughs> and Clock Cleaners. Although Tinkerbell is supposed to be dancing to Pan's flute, the poses made me think of her as a cheerleader with the dandelions. <laughs> Doesn't it? Yeah. And her latest book, Ink and Paint the Women of Walt Disney's Animation, revealed that it took two women to provide live action reference for Tinkerbell. The Ink and Paint artist Ginny Mack guided Mark Davis and the other animators with her facial expressions, while Margaret Carey provided the physique and the movement of the character. This foreboding rendering of Skull Rock was the work of Albert Herder. Born in Zurich, Switzerland, Herder is considered to be the very first inspirational sketch artist at the Disney Studio, which he joined in 1931. He contributed to the studio's very first feature, Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, as well as to designing characters for Pinocchio. Judging by the additional shapes behind the skull, I'd be more inclined to call it skeleton rock, but I doubt it would have the same impact. This uh, pastel concept of Tinkerbell is by Bianca Majuli. In 1935, Bianca became the first woman storyboard artist at Disney's, sharing the story room with about 15 men <laughs> whose ideas tended to revolve around slapstick gags. According to Frank Thomas and Ollie Johnston, two of Walt Disney's nine old men of animation, um, Bianca's contributions and sensibilities provided an important lesson to them. And I quote from Frank and Ollie, Pathos gives comedy the heart and warmth that keeps it from becoming brittle. 
of Neverland, which offers a glimpse of how much area the background artist should paint that needs to be photographed on camera. So, in, in a way, the film frame is the size of the stage, and the background painting is like the set built to, uh, built to fit that stage. These backgrounds were painted in various sizes, uh, shapes, and lengths to accommodate the planning of each shot in the film of the multi-plane camera. When uh, Peter, Wendy, Michael, and John soar past the clouds, and suddenly we see 19th century England below them, it seems to be below us, too. That illusion of depth and movement is pure use of animation as a cinematic experience that you cannot get on your television screen, unless your screen is as big as this one. <laughs> it is a brilliant use of the multiplane effect. So with the contributions of these artists and many, many more, Peter Pan and Neverland will continue to be a home of eternal childhood for every generation. Now, the art that you've seen this afternoon are kept in vaults just like this one, in archival materials that serve to slow down the gradual and eventual aging of the paper and the mediums that make up the production art. Thanks to the forward-thinking vision of Walt Disney, the Animation Research Library's mission to maintain and to preserve the artistic legacy of Disney animation will continue into the future. Hi there, I had a question. Um, you discussed earlier in the presentation how Walt wasn't satisfied exactly with the type of animation they're coming up with for Peter Pan. Do you know, uh, estimated how long it took before they, he came up with a final decision of what kind of style he wanted to go with the film? Well, it's like anything, it's, uh, it's a combination of contributions. I think uh, Mary's, Mary Blair's contribution is especially vital in terms of its, of its color styling. But really, um, you know, the, the fact that they had to wait almost 10 years before they could do it again, um, mainly because of the intervening war, World War and, um, and other factors that were like a few um, financially unsuccessful films, that it took a while for them to. But I think Walt was really keen on making sure he could get the stories up. No specific timeline, so it's just a process. Mm -hmm as part of it. And you see the evolution of the sort of the studio sensibility at the time too. Because when you see the David Hall art, it's a very, very detailed. And then you see how with Mary Blair's influence, it's more about shapes and, and color juxtapositions and uh, making it much more elementary and much more accessible. So. Um, the Disney's version of Peter Pan and Tinkerbell have the, a very distinct style to them. I was wondering if you guys know, looking through all of the different artwork before the production, what, at what point or what inspired the specific design decisions, either making Peter Pan's hair that color, the hat, wearing the tunic instead of having leaves everywhere, because I know like in the original, like Jay and Barry's story, all of the artwork for that is very different. Well, I think part of the, the decision comes from, from uh, the, the amount of work it goes into animating a character. Uh, the animators have as much to say about how how a character is designed as well as the visual development artists. So, uh, so there are major contributions that are happening with with those. You know, it's a again going back to making a collaboration, and those decisions that passes through the directors give a stamp of approval, and it moves on that way. Yeah, we don't have anything very specific as to a certain date. This is what the change was. Because oftentimes, you know, with the art that we have, we're, we're almost like CSI animation. <laughs> how, do we, how do we determine when it happened when? But when you talk about, to people say like Mark Davis, you know, it's like, well, how do I create a character that is animatable? And how do I create a character that's not only animatable, but appealing too? So, you know, it's, it's a lot that, that goes into that say, with Mark, and especially with Tinker. Yeah. So the really cool thing about attending any D23 event is they typically give you a D23 member exclusive gift. And I'm really excited, as I said, a giant Peter Pan fan and a giant Mary Blair fan. Mary Blair, as we learned just now, she was responsible for pretty much the whole aesthetic of the movie Peter Pan. If it wasn't for her, it wouldn't look the way that it does. And that depiction of Neverland is just so beautiful. So we were given this gorgeous print of one of Mary Blair's original pieces of artwork, uh, obviously a replica, but her original piece of artwork that inspired the look of Peter Pan, the feel of it, and 
it's just a wonderful scene of when you first see Peter Pan on the rooftop and he's all in the shadows and Tinkerbell flies down and I think that's a really great thing to kind of capture and it's so beautiful and then of course D23. So, so another uh, cool thing you get whenever you come to the D23 official Disney fan club events is the popcorn bucket. Now it comes with, mostly whenever you see a movie premiere or a movie related event where you sit down in a theater, they give this uh, bucket full of popcorn and they also provide uh, water as well. You, so you have your concessions provided for you. It's got cute little Mickey on it. And for more information, d23.com. So far for my first time on the lot, I'm really loving the vibe that's around here. It's so quiet, you can hear the birds, there's like orange trees over there and benches everywhere and it's just such a peaceful place. I would love to work here in any capacity. I even saw that they have bikes that they ride around the property on and I just imagine that, you know, Walt was walking these streets and it's just a really cool place to be for a Disney fan. So that's one of the benefits of being a D23 member is that you can have these opportunities to come to these places that is not usually open to the public and then you kind of get to just stroll around and enjoy something that is a nice little treat for a Disney fan. Where are you taking us? To Pluto's Torch. What's that? Okay, do you notice anything about the fire hydrant or near the fire hydrant? Near it. It says Pluto's Corner. Okay. Right but if you go over there, you'll see paw prints. What's missing? The fourth paw. Why? Because he's peeing. Because he's peeing. Because he's peeing on the hydrant. <laughs> That's Disney magic right there. Thank you guys for joining us today. We really hope you liked what you saw. We were very excited to come here for our first time. Yeah. Very excited to see Peter Pan the way that we did. I hope you enjoyed those clips and getting to hear those little tidbits and see that art on the screen was just really awesome. Yeah, it was breathtaking. The yeah. ability for, for us to experience that Walt Disney might have might have been walking down the same streets. Uh, it's so cool to, to see that. So serene and wonderful and I want to live yeah. here, but <laughs> I can't. So. Yeah, it's beautiful here. But yeah. uh, we're, we're very uh, grateful for you guys, and hopefully you enjoyed our video. 
We really look forward to making more videos for you guys. In the meantime, you can find us on social media. I'm at Dolip Dame on Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, and Facebook. And I am Dapper Disney Jet on Instagram. And I also have a podcast that you can listen to for free on iTunes and Stitcher. It is at Main Street Style Podcast, where t myself and two of my friends talk about style and Disney events in the California area and Orlando area. So it's really fun. We'd really appreciate it if you come check it out. So until next time, just think of a happy thought. Never grow up. And have a magical day.